The first thing we need to do is navigate to the custom screen area, which we can do by going to configure and custom screens. This will bring us a list of all the custom screens that are currently in your database. To add a new one, we're going to click on plus one. We then need to add the code and the title. So the code is just an abbreviation of what the custom screen is. So I'm just going to add a test in here. And the title is a full description of what the custom screen will be. So my first custom screen. Custom screens are made up of lots of different fields, which we add on one by one until we have made the full custom screen. To start adding these on, we click on plus one, which will bring us our add form field box. First thing we need to decide is what type we're going to use for this field. And this can be done by clicking on this drop down box and choosing one of the types here. We've got label, date, number, text box, check box, money, option group and button, combo box and entry, note field and tab. Now I'm going to go through one by one what all these do, starting with label at the top. A label is text we can add onto the custom screen that can identify or group together a certain area of the custom screen. Once we've selected label, we need to state what the label is going to say, and we can do this by adding this into the title section. So I'm going to add in my first custom screen here. And you'll see the options below, many of them are greyed out because they do not apply to the label section. Um, the ones we do have is line, so how far down the screen the um, label will be, and the field left offset, so how far from the left the label is going to be. Um, the width option can be changed, but we'll probably not need to change this as it changes automatically depending on what you have placed in the title. The last two options we have is whether we make the label bold or italic. So if I click OK, this will now put the label on the screen. Now of any of these fields, if you wish to edit them again, you can just click on highlight them and click on the edit button here. We can then change any of the settings for the label here. So just to show you with the line, if I move this to one, it will go down further down the screen. And if I increase the field left offset, it will go into the middle of the page and bold and italic will we'll do that. But I'm just going to leave these as the default. So that's your label field. Next, we're going to add a date field, and we're going to do this by clicking on plus one and changing the type to date. We're going to add a title in, which is what the label will show next to the field. We then have our options, which include the line setting, so how far down the screen it is. And then we have the left offset. So this is slightly different to the label. So we're choosing how far from the left the label is and how far from the left the, um, the date field will be. The width will mark how big we want the, the field box to be. And just like before, we have bold and italic. Um, we do have some more options. So we have a um, don't display title, which means it won't display this title as a label. And the triggers medical alert, which will mean it will trigger a medical alert when this is marked in the system. Once we've added all this, we click OK. And you'll now see the date is added on here. And we'll now be able to add a date in and using the up and down buttons, be able to flick through our date. So that's your date field. Next up, we have our number field. So just as before, clicking plus one, changing to number, adding in a title, just like the date. Doing how far down, how far left, the width of the box, and again, whether it's bold, italic, um, the new option we have on here is show zero as blank. So if someone enters zero, it just won't show at all. And don't display title triggers medical alert. So if we click OK, we now have number of fields and we can scroll through these to add a number. We can now see our custom screen starting to take form on the right hand side. And we can use this preview panel to monitor the progress of the custom screen while we build it. So I'm going to carry on with the fields. So if we click on plus one, the next one we're going to look at is the text box. And this is probably 
the most useful one there. So just like the others, we can add a title. And we now have a new option called number of letters. So this is the number of letters that we're going to allow the user to enter into the text box when he's filling out the custom screen. By default, this is 20, but we can add more and more, and this will increase the size of the text box the more letters we add on. And just like before, we have all the line, left, left offsets, bold italic, and all the other options we had before. So when we click OK, we can now see our text box, which we can start adding text to. Next up, we have checkbox, which is pretty self-explanatory. So the user can check the box if that applies to them. We also have money, where we can add any cost values to the custom screen. The next two types we're going to look at are more complicated, but they're also very effective. And these are option group and combo boxes. With option groups being a selection of radio buttons a user can choose from, and a combo box being a drop down box. Um, so I'm going to look at option group first. If we select option group and type in the title of that option, you'll now see that the group a selection has opened up to us and this will make more sense as I explain this and um, so now we've created that we're going to click OK and you'll now see the option group is there but the option group is useless without the buttons so we need to add the buttons on so as I choose the button and add the title for that button and when I click OK we'll now see that option is there so we need obviously at least two buttons on there And you can add on as many options as you'd like. But you'll see from here, you can only choose one of the options, which is the whole point of the group and the buttons. We also have the combo boxes, which just like the option group, we're going to choose the box and add the title. And the only thing you're going to need to definitely change on here is the width. Now the width will decide how big the drop down box will be so it usually needs to at least be 100 but it could be that we need to increase that further so uh, once we've done that we click OK and that is now our choice box there but just like the options the shot combo box is useless without the combo entries and um, so we're going to add those on as well Just like the option group, we can add on as many of these as we like. We can then use the drop down box to make an entry here. When we create an option group or a combo box, it will automatically be assigned a group, which we can view either here or even just down here at the bottom left. We can see that option group has group one and this combo box has group two. We'll see that when we look at the buttons, they also have a group, which is how the groups know which buttons belong to them. So if I wanted to add a new option at this point, when I click on plus one, I would need to make sure that the group is set to one. And if I was to do a combo entry, the group was set to two. Custom screens can have multiple amounts of combo boxes and option groups, so it's important to note which groups belong to which and make sure you assign them correctly. We also have a note field type, which is basically where the user can add any notes, similar to a text box, but I'll show you why this is different. The user can then add his notes in here. So it's slightly different to the text box, but kind of similar. The last type option we have to look at is the tab option, and this will allow us to add additional tabs to the custom screen. So you can make very vast, large custom screens. So under tab, it's going to put the title of the tab. 
and as you see everything's grayed out because it's literally just a tab and it has no settings on that so if I click OK you'll now see it says my first tab up here and if I was to add an additional tab you'll now see we can flick between the two tabs and that when we add any other types now whether it's a text box date number whatever we can change the tabs on here so we know which tab it is going on to Now we have all the fields we want on our custom screen. We can start looking at the layout and choose where we want our fields to go. Now this can either be done at the end once you have all the fields or you can design it as you go, depending on your preference. So I'm just gonna move some fields around. So I'm just gonna move these options so they look a bit better. So I'm just gonna select this option and edit this and just move it up a line. And then with option two, I'm gonna move this up and further to the right so we now have them in a line instead I can also going to move one of my choice combo boxes up as well so you can see how you can move your fields around once you've finished creating the custom screen you need to decide its default values Currently, when this custom screen appears for the user, it will appear as the preview panel shows here on the right. But if we want to change it so the fields that have entries in them already, then we can do this by adding these on here. So that when it appears for the user, this information will already be there. And once we've decided those default values, we are finished with the custom screen. So we just click OK. And we'll now see it in our list of custom screens. Next, we need to add this custom screen to our one of our services, and we can do this by going to configure and services, finding the code you want to add this to, double clicking, clicking on custom screen, selecting our new custom screen, and deciding whether the pop-up is disabled, so they have to manually enter it, or that it pops up when planned, or once the treatment is completed. If I, if I now go to a patient file, start a new course of treatment, and chart the exam, our custom screen will now appear. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please give our support team a call.